Watching Harmony and Diversity, and today we're speaking with David Lawrence. David's a school teacher, and he's an author, and he's recently written a book about Christian unity. Thanks for coming. Pleasure, no. As is the practice with this program, we'll first have a look at your spiritual background. You were born a Catholic. What happened then? Well, I was uh, born a Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was about 15, so in, in middle school, um, I was just like any other person, any other kid who goes to school, you know, their faith didn't mean a great deal to them. And then one day, I don't know why, I, um, I just took a, a book out of my dad's library about a, a priest called Peter Claver. And um, in reading that book, um, I, could, I could prepare for hours and hours and hours and try and express what happened to me. Mm. in reading that book, but I can't. It's impossible. Mm. I, I, I just felt the presence of God in the most incredible, life-changing way. It was mm -hmm. just the most beautiful, incredible mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And I knew for, for sure, like I just had this inner certainty that God was real and that He loved me. And mm. uh, life was pretty difficult up to that point. My parents were separating and it was, you know, life was hard. Mm. I am... Um, I wanted to die, I didn't want to be alive. You know, I just, life was miserable every single day. I just, did, just didn't want to be there. And then this, this happened and I, I just was filled with this joy mm. from being so unhappy and miserable, mm -hmm. morose and in, introverted mm -hmm. to, um, to experiencing this joy which lifted me out of myself. And um, it was incredible and I just had this hunger for God. I just couldn't get enough of God. I just read book after book and I prayed and I went to mass every day and um, and and I just wanted to, to serve God and to, to to love him and I just I, I just couldn't get enough of him and I thought wow this is this is incredible I've I've experienced it you know and mm -hmm. sometimes it's it's almost like um if I can draw a parallel it's like giving somebody a cardboard cut out of a chicken mm -hmm. and saying eat that chicken that's what God's like and you'll eat it and you'll think it's tasteless and it's... That's right. But if you actually eat the chicken and it's a roast meal, it's nourishing, it's, 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 it's magnificent. Mm. But that's, that's a, a limp comparison, but that kind of gives you some idea. Yes. And I, um, so I was just filled with this new zest for life. Um, mm. it, it was incredible. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I could go on and on about the, the beauty, but it, I was hit with this this big bang where I just ha had this love of God, love of the church, love of um, the scriptures, love of the rosary, love of Mary, love of the Eucharist, uh, all in one hit, just, yes. just bang. Just, I've just found myself having a love. And I just wanted to give myself completely to God in my limited way at the time. Mm. Mm. So it, was a, it sounds like a, a, a major hunger. You had a hunger for, for everything that you could draw from, from the church because you know, the rosary, the mass, the Bible. Yep. So that, yep. at what time did that, or did it, maybe it did never get sated? When were you satisfied? When did you sort of slow down on that? Uh, that honeymoon period, which mm -hmm. people generally have when they have this big conversion, I, I, I don't know that this joy that sort of was almost superhuman lasted maybe a few weeks mm -hmm. where I, I didn't feel like I could eat much. I didn't need to eat much. I was... Um, I didn't, you know, I fasted a lot, and mm -hmm. um, but it lasted for, for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. I would say where where I um, not with the same intensity, mm. but this this desire, this love for God, this this desire to pray, mm. and then um, I suppose after a few years there was a bit of a it just became a lot more difficult, mm. and um, you know, and dry and sort of the, the presence of God was now sort of um, I found not not so strong, mm. and. Um, in my life, in my life since that time, you know, you often have um, experiences where, where you just feel that God is, is not there and you just feel that he's abandoned me because, yes. of the, you know, it was so strong 
and then when sometimes it's amazing that you, you at those at those times you never think that you could ever think that God, God is abandoning you because it's so strong, His presence yeah. is so real and sustaining you and so inspirational. But then sometimes you can just feel nothing. Mm. And in fact, the opposite, the God's actually abandoning you. So mm. that happens from time to time as is the normal Christian, Christian walk. Yes. And there's been a couple of situations in life where I feel like I've, um, I've sort of made a decision not to follow God. Mm. Um, but, um, but because I had such a strong sense of his presence, it was impossible for me not to believe, not believe in God. Yes. I never not believed in God. I just didn't want to follow his way. Mm. And so in my own sort of way, sort of went my own own way, mm. but then came back. Did those ways have a good outcome or did they no. fall over? No, not at all. <laughs> no. In the first situation, I I just, I felt that God had, had let, let me down because a lot of those dreams that I had, you know, this is my early 20s, for myself were not coming true. Mm -hmm. And so I just uh, bl blamed God. And that was a fairly immature response. Even though I had this very powerful experience of God, you know, it doesn't sort of make you a perfect human being. You yeah. still got your own, I still had my own faults and weaknesses and flaws. And even now, you know, the way that I see God is imperfect, but I feel so blessed that mm -hmm. uh, God experienced, God showed me his love and I experienced yeah. God as a God of love. Yeah. And in, in my journey, I've had critical moments where I've experienced God's healing in a very powerful Way, particularly emotional, psychological healing. Okay. And um, and I just, I just, yeah, I'm so grateful mm. that I know that it's God that's done that. Mm. If they're not too personal, what are some examples of that? Th there's no, 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 One was um, I was um, because of the the, the breakup of my of my parents, mm. I had this this in inherent sense that I just wasn't very worthy. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. and I had a, a poor self-esteem. Even though I'd had mm. this experience of God, I, I think I had this harboring poor self-esteem, best self-esteem. And then through a, a few situations, there was one particular incident. I was with a, a Franciscan priest who, who had a gift of healing. Mm. And um, we, we were just praying for me one day. And I, um, again, I just um, had this, this experience of Jesus. And I was the, the, like a lamb in his arms yes, and it was so tender and so beautiful and so touching and so deep seated. It, it really just, um, I had Jesus loving me. Yes. And, and in that time it was so personal. It was Jesus, not sort of God earlier, but it was, it was the, the person of Jesus mm -hmm. um, who touched me. And um, you know, when you, when you believe that Jesus is the, the son of God and the the mm. one who is to come to judge the living and the dead and the second person of the Blessed Trinity, when this God comes to you in a very tender yes. way and actually touches you and feel, and you feel, yes. it's, not, it's not in the head, it's, it's, uh, it's in the, the whole being. The whole being, but something that is in the head is our insistence on me measuring things by time and we're out of it. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with David Lawrence. David's a school teacher and an author. He's just written a book about Christian unity. David, I interrupted you in a very sensitive place before. You were speaking about some of the experiences that you had, and you were t describing a fairly elevated state of, of, of being. And so I... Um I had this this experience of Jesus mm. uh, through this this healing prayer, if you like, mm -hmm. um, where I was touched so deeply, and so personally and intimately, and, and experienced this love so powerfully mm -hmm. that I, I considered a a, a, a a definite point at mm. which my self esteem just began to get a lot more healthy and robust, and right. um, and I think you know I, I know that God mediates His love through people, through the love of people, family, friends, etc. This one, um, this one was very direct, mm. and and it was just beautiful. And so, when you experience Jesus in that way, you naturally just want everybody to experience this this love. And when you, when I, often when I talk to people about faith and God and religion, it's this it's it's this experience of the the cardboard chicken, mm. 
-hmm. It's nothing to yeah. offer them, but, but I know mm -hmm. who Jesus is. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, so I think it's, it's, it's just really important for, for me who have experienced this love to, um, to, try and, and to try and share, share that love and try and um, in some way um, be a sort of a, uh, an ambassador, a servant, a follower mm -hmm. who, who points to Jesus as a, as a, as a God of love. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that God has sort of broken into my life, just like he yeah. has broken into the world to show his love. And it's not some fantasy fairy story. It's, it's real. You know, it's real. Real, yes. And there's even in the midst of suffering. You yes. know, it's, it's not like um, God has taken away the suffering. You know, mm. you know, there's times in my life where he hasn't taken away the suffering. Mm. But just having his presence there is, is, um, is sustaining and, and joyful. So you can, I can, I've experienced joy mm. while I'm suffering. Yes. Which, which I think is a, a very particularly Christian gift, a yes. gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, a sustaining joy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, you had some uh, concept of being a priest, though, didn't you? Yep, I did. Mm. I did. When I had this, when I was fifteen, and I had this this big bang experience of the love of God, who just broke into my my life. At one, because I wanted to give myself so much to God. Um, and as a Catholic, as a, as, a, as a young man, very often uh, the priest is the first thing that comes into your mind. You've got this impression that being a priest is the best way to serve God, <laughs> um, which I've subsequently discovered is, is not the best way. The best way to serve God is the way that God wants you to serve him. Mm. And for some people it is as a priest. For me, I thought, well, I know God wants me to, to, to give myself completely to him. I want to, but I want to be the best. Mm. And I want to do it in the best way. Um, you know, there's a little bit of ego and pride in there, but I didn't want to be a priest. I thought, mm. no, it's just too restrictive, etc. And, and at one point, I was kneeling in my room um, at night, and there was a picture of uh, a bas relief sta a statue of Jesus, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, there. And I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I, at this point, if you want me to be a priest, I will be a priest. And and I thought at that moment when I let my guard down that that's what He was asking me to be. And so, I, so I, I, um, at that point, I was very excited. Yes, Lord, I want to be one of your priests, just like Peter Claver and these great priests that I'd read about in my dad's library. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, I realized that, that this is, you know, when in the actual concrete circumstances of life, I did my arts degree, I got a job, it just wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. And then at the age of 33, I decided on the recommendation of somebody to, um, to do a, a year of discernment with the Emmanuel community, of which I was a part. That's mm -hmm. one of these new charismatic communities. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to Belgium and did this year. And at the end of that, I decided that um, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I was very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Because prior to that, I'd had this sense, this obligation, this sense of obligation. You know, back when I was 15, God wanted me to be a priest. But I, yes. looking back on it, I just uh, misinterpreted it. I, I don't know. But, um, but after three months, we had this very, very wise priest who was the rector and the spiritual director and he looked at me with these big eyes with glasses huge eyes and he said he looked he looked at me and he said you what do you want mm -hmm. and i realized and that's what god was asking me what, what do i want and mm -hmm. i i wanted to love him i wanted to serve him but i didn't want to be a priest and i didn't have that sense of obligation and so i thought yes i i don't want to be i'm free i've got this answer Yes. About whether all these years, you know, even breaking up with girlfriends, etc., because I thought back my mind I'm going to be a priest. Uh -huh. But I was freed from it at that stage. I was 33, and uh, so I came back to Melbourne, excited about what the rest of life had to hold. That's interesting. Well, there there is a school of thought which, of course, uh, holds that we are all actually priests, just not ordained. A royal priesthood. Exactly mm -hmm. right. So you, you uh, the Emmanuel community, what, uh, what's that about? Uh, I love the Emmanuel community. It's mm. one of these, these beautiful treasures that I think the Holy Spirit is giving to the church at mm. this time, particularly. It started with a, a guy called Pierre Goussard, whose cause for canonization is up, mm -hmm. um, with another young medical student called Martine Cutter, who's still alive um, and living in, in France. And it was at the start of the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church Right. Um, this couple, Martin and Pierre, went to America and experienced what's called the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this new outpouring where they experienced mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in a very, very powerful way. 
they brought it back to France and through the action of the Holy Spirit, they started a prayer group which just grew exponentially and, um, and then came to become a, a, an ecclesial movement called Emmanuel. Okay. And there's a number of them around the world and, and this is one. It's been in, in Melbourne for, for quite a few years, but it's in about 50 countries throughout mm -hmm. the world. So if you're called to be a priest with the community, generally you, you, um, you can go to a place in Belgium where they have the Formation House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and so that, uh, I, I was actually going to ask you a question which would lead us over the break time, so I won't do that. It, just summarising your story that to this point though, it, it seems that it constantly comes back to love, it comes back to love, it comes back to love, yep. and the Jesus you holding, him holding you as a lamb is just a wonderful example of that. We'll go to a break. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with David Lawrence. David's a school teacher and he's an author. He's written a book about Christian unity. We're talking about the Emmanuel community, David. Uh, how does that manifest itself uh, in your day, in, say in Australia? What, what does it do? Um, the community is uh, a, a way of holiness. So people who are drawn to the community and who live in the community are people who want to serve God and serve the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a Catholic community, um, but it has all sorts of missions and activities. So what, what happens is if, if you feel uh, drawn to this way of life, to this, this lifestyle within the church, um, you go through a formation period and, um, uh, and then, you, then you make a commitment. And essentially the, there are three sort of graces of the community, uh, compassion, adoration and evangelization. So it's a very missionary uh, community. Um, it does all sorts of missionary work and work with, uh, you know, in, in poor countries, third world countries, but all sorts of online missionary work. And it's got a, runs schools of missions, schools of music and uh, street missions and prayer groups. And mm -hmm. um, we meet regularly once a month as a community. And also we meet in small household groups fortnightly um, for, for a year. Um, so, um, Members commit themselves to mm -hmm. uh, extended periods of prayer each day, mm -hmm. just before the Blessed Sacrament, if, if possible, and, um, and try and live their Christian life simply and, and, um, and as well as they can. Mm. So th it's a lay community. It's a lay community, yes. although there are mm -hmm. priests mm -hmm. uh, in the community. So there are, there are men and women who are consecrated in celibacy Mm -hmm. uh, like the old brothers and sisters, yes, yes. Um, there are priests, and um, and but most of the community are lay families with normal jobs, um, single people, etc. Oh. Oh, that's uh, very interesting. And did, did it's got some communities overseas as well, as you say. Did, do you meet together? Is there an annual? Yep, there is. Um, there are. There are. The spiritual heart of the community is in Paris le Monial, which is a small mm -hmm. town in France where the revelation of Jesus' sacred heart was revealed to say, Margaret Mary. Okay. So that's the spiritual heart and the community are entrusted with um, pilgrimages to that, to that site. So there's um, every year there's thousands and thousands of people, um, 25,000 people that converge on Paralimonial in summertime. And um, there's a, a week of formation for young people, for married people, for priests, for musicians, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and also dur during the year, there are certain international congresses and, um, and meetings. Right. But obviously not everyone in, you know, around the world it exists in lots of different countries, 50 countries. Not everyone can come overseas, so they just yeah. have their own meeting in their own countries mm -hmm. and retreats. In fact, there is a retreat going on in, in Rye in January this year okay. so mm -hmm. in, in Australia. So people from around Australia will be coming to that. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful mm -hmm. community. It's just a way of, of, of sharing the love and the gospel of Jesus with, mm -hmm. with a world that hungers for him. Mm. And, and you say it, it, it has uh, works, work, good works that it does. Uh, what would be some examples of that? One, um, it runs an organisation called Fidesco, which um, is basically like an NGO that works in um, poor countries throughout the world. Um, mm. For example, a recent initiative has been um, with some of, the, some of the Latin American communities in the US 
yes. who are uh, struggling, you know, who, who come up and work in the US, but their conditions are really, really poor. So the community is uh, funding sort of um, people to, to work with, uh, with, with the South Americans there. Another one in Africa, lots of uh, community development projects in Africa. Um, there's one in Paris, for example, that I attended to. It's, it's SOS Prayer, which is 24-hour free service where people just call up and get a counselling service and, um, and have people pray for them. Uh, there's a hospice there for people who are dying for AIDS, so the community runs that. So there's, there's many, many, many in different countries have their own different um, mm. missions and, and sort of uh, outreaches mm. depending on what the need of the, the country is. And for you, how, how close does being part of the Emmanuel community uh, match up with your desire to be a priest in the past? Well, with, um, when I first encountered the community, I still mm. had this idea that I was going to be a priest. Mm. Um, I first encountered the community in Parallel Mondial when I went uh, to France in 1991. Mm. And a friend of mine who actually is a priest in the community in Australia, he suggested to, for me to go and go to the summer sessions. Mm. I went there and there's this huge tent in this beautiful open grounds in this Burgundy village. Mm. Absolutely picturesque. And <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never experienced the Catholic Church so alive and vibrant and dynamic with 5,000 people, young people, beautiful people, beautiful women, um, and full of faith and energy and vitality, people who love their faith and, and who are formed in their faith and who love Jesus and who, who are full of the Holy Spirit, the joy, and the life, the energy and the dynamism, who are proud of their faith and wanted to share it in okay. an environment. And I thought, wow, I want to be a part of this. Mm. And a number of people from Melbourne experienced a very similar thing. And so it just it just grew, grew and grew. Mm. So so to yeah. answer your question, so yeah. I as a yeah. as a, if I was to be a priest, I would mm. want it to be a priest in the Emmanuel community. Yes. And so yes. it's it's not an order, no. as such like the Dominicans or the Jesuits. Mm. Um, Emmanuel priests are diocesan priests, mm. but they have a special relationship with the with the, the local bishop who allows them not just their diocesan work but part of their time to devote to the missions and the outreaches of the community as well. Mm. Yes, yeah, because I was just thinking about the priest with the big eyes behind his glasses saying, what is it that you want? Mm. And perhaps the Emmanuel community is more what you want and you, because you seem to be, you come alive when you're talking about mm. it. It's, it's very much part of it. So it is, uh, you're, you're married, aren't you? Yeah, yes. married for eight years to my lovely wife. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and uh, is she also associated with the Emmanuel community? Yeah, generally yeah, yeah, when, when one yeah. spouse is in it, ge generally yeah. both, both are in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it seems that uh, there's a lot about Christian unity in what we've been talking about, and that's what your book's about. Yeah. Will you come back next week and speak about that? Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. We'll be speaking with David Lawrence about his book on Christian unity. Baha'u'llah Shanti Yom